my name is Nick Hayhurst from Hayhurst & Co Architects um, and um, I'm also the course leader for the AMARC in Architecture at University of Brighton. Um, I'm here today to talk about um, a, a Lawn House, um, a, um, a project where um, we did a particularly elaborate um, uh, kind of concrete worktop um, and also to talk about some of the other um, residential projects that we've done um, over the last few years um, with a particular kind of emphasis on the relationship between kind of materials and uh, the spaces that they, um, that for, that they form um, and, and can make. Over the years we've had a kind of a particular kind of interest and engagement with um, how materials make spaces um, and um, and looking at this idea of the an architecture of the um, inhabited cabinet and the architecture of the room um, and how this is expanded to, to, to make projects um, and to make spaces using a different set of material languages. So we started off eight years ago carrying out very small projects looking at use of materials and adaptability of cheap materials, cheap ways of doing things um, to create different um, uh, different kinds of effects um, and different kind of spaces or spatial arrangements. Um, and we also became quite interested in how um, you kind of use materials um, to, to try, and, try and adapt spaces um, for different kinds of uses. Um, Lawn House was a project that we, um, we started looking at um, in the beginning of 2010 um, and was eventually complete um, in the summer of 2011. Um, and the house is located in Snaresbrook um, in East London um, and um, the clients had recently bought property um, and were looking to um, make a kind of sizeable um, extension to it. Um, and it's quite interesting looking at the, the back of the house at the moment and the, um, uh, the kind of the, the interesting kind of uh, Victorian uh, turn of the century kind of veranda um, that existed on the um, house at the moment. Um, and in some ways the client wanted to kind of keep this and reuse it and find an, um, an, in, an interesting and adaptive reuse of it. Um, but uh, eventually it just proved too, um, uh, too narrow in terms of the footprint um, for reuse. Um, and so eventually they ended up using um, the, the carcass of the veranda for a little summer house halfway down the garden. Um, one of the kind of the big challenges with this project was how, because of the width of the, of the rear of the house, was how to um, uh, how, how to make a roof profile um, that kind of that, that fitted with the character of the of the verandas that existed before and also the character of the existing house. Um, the client was very keen not to have a flat roof, and so it then became the challenge of how to create a series of pitched roofs um, that, that 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 some way. Um, uh, kind of uh, dealt with the character of the house and so you know the diagram of the old and the diagram of the new um, looking at somehow kind of taking on that character of the veranda um, and then looking through the um, the kind of the, the, the stage development so um, the first image looking at the original um, kind of uh, uh, formation of the spaces and then this idea of taking a series of smaller pitched roofs that, that sit um, kind of directly below the first floor sills um, and then stretching it across the site um, then doing a little bit of a modification to fit with what the planners were kind of interested in. Um, and then um, kind of dividing it, kind of carving out a series of internal and external spaces within it, and then um, nipping and tucking um, to make it kind of suit and, and fit spaces. Um, so that was the, the rear, uh, rear elevation of the house before. Um, and then the proposed elevation um, showing the final resolution of the pictures. Uh, the existing plan um, and then the proposed plan, um, where um, you can see the, the kind of the curtilage of the existing house, which was then carved open um, to form um, a, a new series of spaces, um, and where the uh, the concrete kitchen island um, forms the centerpiece um, to those spaces, um, and uh, and from that kitchen island, um, the idea that you have a full set of visibility over the kind of surrounding spaces, so you can look into the. Um, uh, the kind of the, 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 the kind of the play area. You can look into the, the place where the pool room is. You can look into the dining table um, area, um, and then also look over to the garden. Um, and so the, the, the concrete island very much became the, the kind of the centre stage um, of the set of spaces. Uh, and then the concrete flooring finish then continued down um, uh, to the garden, and you can see on the left hand side here of this image the um, uh, the steps. Um, kind of coming down and, and touching the garden level um, and there we see the, the concrete steps um, kind of coming up from the garden level onto a terrace um, and then going up again and forming the uh, kitchen island. Uh, and here's the kind of the edge from the, the cocktail bar end 
um, uh, looking at the kitchen island, and then again from inside of the space, looking out. The fabrication process was um, quite a fascinating experience to, to watch, and uh, White and Reed were the, um, were the subcontractors who carried out the work. Um, and it took a great amount of um, kind of forethought and engineering um, on both their part and our part um, to work out how the formwork would be put together, how it would be pulled off, um, and the number of pores that it would be done in. So it was effectively done in three pores, one for the outside terrace and steps, one for the inside terrace, uh, inside um, floor area, um, and then one for the kitchen island um, and the steps, and that was all done in one pour. And so um, you can see in this slide the, um, the, the, the step um, pieces again being made, so there was also kind of a thought given into how the formwork would be taken off. And in, in some ways the, the formwork was actually quite elegant in itself um, and almost as um, elegant as the kitchen island um, itself when it was finished. Um, and these are the steps um, uh, being uh, formwork for the steps and the rebar. Um, and then this was the, um, the process for the finishing. So um, whereas the floor was um, kind of uh, machine finished, um, the worktop was um, hand troweled finished. And you can see um, White and Reed kind of working here. Um, and you can also see the amount of kind of the, the, the substructure that's necessary to actually um, uh, build the whole thing. And here's the final set of, uh, final set of pouring. Um, it was quite also quite interesting watching um, White and Reed work. Um, they're the kind of normally the most mild mannered, kind of calm guys um, who are who are kind of really good to work with. Um, but it's also quite interesting on the on the day of the pour itself when there are about five guys there. Um, they become very focused and um, uh, and uh, very uh, kind of uh, kind of concentrated on delivering um, the the worktop. Um, and it because because of the kind of the speed at which and the kind of the time conditions of that day. Um, it becomes quite, um, uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a, it can become quite a fraught process, and so the main contractor and everybody else had to kind of get out of their way whilst they were kind of, uh, kind of carrying out their work. Um, one of the other um, uh, kind of uh, interesting things was that in order to get the sliding doors to work, um, and so you achieved this flush finish from inside to out, was also you ended up with um, a series of um, very kind of thin elements of the polished concrete floor, um, uh, which had to be quite carefully done. So this is where the three um, uh, sliding doors uh, kind of uh, run across, uh, and so you have very thin pieces of kind of concrete um, kind of in there. And then this is the process when the, this is the part when the um, uh, when the formwork came off. Um, and you can see the different coloration um, in the concrete as it's beginning to dry. Um, so it's much lighter at the top, um, uh, where it's uh, where it's relatively drier, um, and you can see the kind of the moisture kind of uh, filtering down, and a much darker colour at the bottom around the steps. Um, it's also the kind of thing where um, uh, the clients have to be quite careful about the um, about using the concrete for the first. Um, especially for those couple of weeks, couple of months or so, um, as the as the kind of the, the the kind of the curing process kind of continues, um, and that there's a sort of a slightly a kind of obsessive kind of cleaning process that happens, um, but normally that kind of um, that that kind of resolves itself after about the month, first month or so. Um, here's the kitchen island from the other side. The polishing process probably took about a day, and then they come back, and then they come back about two weeks later um, and do another um, uh, another another kind of uh, polishing and then also sealing um, sealing it after that okay I'm also going to show um, two other houses um, that we've kind of completed recently um, first one Hampstead Beach House um, which is in Belsize Park and here we were um, using kind of a, a timber material to define spaces um, from inside to out. But we had this nice idea at the beginning that uh, we'd have this idea of a concrete carpet. Um, unfortunately, um, the idea of using concrete didn't um, uh, uh, didn't come through on this one, and that a tiled floor was used instead. Um, but it, but still, the principle of using a particular material to, material to reinforce um, a set of spatial ideas. Um, about how materials and spaces are, are used kind of together. Um, and so here the, the concrete carpet kind of defines the spaces from inside to out. Um, and then in this case the white larch um, uh, defines the, um, the, the kind of the spaces around it. Um, and then there's a series of kind of openings in it. Um, and so that's the rear elevation, um, the previous plans, and then the proposed plans where you can see 
um, the, uh, the kind of the concrete, this idea of the concrete carpet that runs um, from inside to out, and the other materials kind of housing um, housing the other spaces around it. The third project which I'm going to show is Harry House, which um, was completed at the end of 2011 um, and was a recipient of a RIBA a National Award in 2012 um, and also the RIBA London uh, Small Projects Award. Um, and uh, this was a project where we worked very closely um, with the clients um, to um, develop a project which kind of sat with, sat quite comfortably um, within the grain of the, the kind of the, the, the shape of the existing site. So we had quite an awkward site um, which started with a, a frontage of about one and a half metres wide, a front elevation of about six metres wide but then expanded to about ten metres wide, ten and a half metres wide at its widest point. Um, and it's quite an odd site and difficult site um, uh, to work with um, and uh, in, in many ways the design evolved um, as a response to the angle geometry of, of the existing site. Um, and we started to look at this, this um, idea of um, kind of sinking the floor by about half a metre um, deliberately to maintain a, a 2.8 metre floor to ceiling height to maintain that kind of sense of a Victorian um, space rather than coming into a, a low 2.4 metre floor to ceiling height. Um, and this also provided a more intimate relationship with the garden and the spaces outside. Um, and then again, then again using materials, so in this case slate, in this case, slate and timber, um, so that the slate forms the enclosure and the timber defines the, the kind of the interior condition which then wraps around and forms a dining space, um, little nooks and crannies and, and, and timber seats. Um, and one of the peculiarities of the plan is this kind of extra room um, that exists between the kind of the rear formal room and the staircase, um, which um, in our case got um, kind of uh, used um, to, um, to, to reform a new staircase. And we deliberately, deliberately wanted to kind of challenge some of the, um, the conditions of the existing building. So um, here you see the kind of the staircase kind of um, uh, twisting and winding round to get down to the dining room um, and then deliberately opening up um, at the point where the door to the utility room is, um, you know, deliberately because when you come out of the utility room you have a big kind of clothes basket and just this idea of kind of providing kind of bits of spaces in particular places, um, but also about providing a, a, a kind of a staggered route down um, and a kind of a slightly staggered route down to the dining spaces. Um, one of the other things to do with the materials is also looking at the materials of the existing house. So here we had quite a nice um, set of mosaic uh, floor tiles in the in the floor in the hall level of the existing house. And conventionally, you take timber floorboards across the way. And what we wanted to do here was actually continue to take it up, um, which means that you then get much smaller module pieces of timber being used at the junction with the um, existing mosaic floor. And so there's this kind of nice um, kind of scalar transition. Um, from the um, uh, from the old to the new, um, and then this was kind of as you then drop down into the kitchen space, um, looking out uh, to the rear and the dining area, um, and then also using um, a material to create other kind of nooks and crannies. So um, where the um, where the owl is is where the uh, is where the curtains are um, kind of kept behind, and to the left of the lamp you can uh, you can see the little um, kind of opening where you can kind of control the um, the pulley um, for the for the curtains and they come come in and out um, and also see the the kind of the way of manipulating and using the timber to create a sense of space and this idea of the kind of inhabited cabinet um, which we which we talk about quite a lot and the floor was um, uh, uh, quite an interesting material um, it's a ceramic uh, f uh, tile which is 1200 by 200 that was then water cut um, on either end um, to um, uh, to um, to then form the herringbone pattern um, and also looks like a timber floor um, and the other kind of benefit I don't think we fully realised until it was actually complete um, was that the um, that the, having the white floor actually creates a lot of kind of luminosity kind of into the extension um, and actually for, for many times during the day you don't actually need the, the artificial lighting on which is quite unusual in a slightly sunken kitchen um, and, uh, and so you kind of get this, this kind, of, kind of extra benefit of the space so again it becomes quite an interesting um, use of using slate, using timber and in this case a ceramic tile um, to accentuate 
um, a particular set of special conditions.